Yo, what's good? It's your bro Lo, and I'm bringing you guys a saucy live Zoom recording. I just did this with my friends and also my followers, so I hope you guys enjoy this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. All right, I'm recording right now. I think I think it um it um is gonna ask y'all uh, that I'm recording or some shit like that. Okay, so I'm gonna just go over some analysis. I didn't take a trade today because um, I really I really didn't know like. Not what what was going on yesterday and today i really didn't you know i don't have like a analysis like that but like um today i did look at the charts and starting off with euro usd i saw this right here so remember fomc had um created this high right here and manipulation so a lot of times like you want to trade away from the manipulation but in this case right even though you have this refined order block right here in this case, you have to pay attention to the higher time frame as well. So like this week, I was trying to get a buy in here and that's when I got stopped out. I'm gonna actually go over that because it wasn't that good of a, I know my mistake on this uh, buy that I took. So as you can see, right, you have this stop hunt right here by this, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this price leg right here from the start here to, to the uh, upside. So when I'm looking at this, right, my mistake my what my mistake was like it's not the best setup it's like a i usually take like my a setups to b setups sometimes i, I you know i do i do a um over trade sometimes you know what i'm saying but i kind of like try to like stay disciplined with only trading my a to b setups right here this was like a c and i risked more than i should have should have on this setup so as you can see how i took out liquidity you have a breaker structure right here right and this was one is low okay so this was my context going on um with this with this trade right here so like when you look at it right look how it's not much aggressive price action so like yeah i could go down to the five minute and you'll see all types of uh fegs and imbalances right but like when you look at it on the higher time frames it's not much aggressive price action that ran up until you got this candle right here you see how this candle was aggressive right here but all of this run up was not that aggressive so what i did was i took a buy which i should have risked less or not taking the trade at all i took a buy right here off of this candle right here when price came down here i thought this was liquidity for this buy and when it came down yeah it gave a it gave a solid reaction but it just didn't hold and that's when price completely mm -hmm. came so this, this was a mistake that I, I should have either risked less or not taken the trade at all, um, even though I had this context. Plus, when you look at this whole this whole price data, all this data right here, right? When we came back down, when we came back down, and you see how you see how we tapped into this uh this uh order block inside of this daily order block right here, this daily order block, when we tapped into there we had some type of price action, but it wasn't aggressive for the rest of the way. Like it wasn't as aggressive, right, of a move. So um, that's just, I think that that was my main mistake is um, taking this trade when there wasn't no clear, clean, aggressive price action. You know what I mean? So um, right now I looked at it today. I looked at EU today and I saw this refined order block right here, right? Because you have the manipulation and then you have the aggressive run. And this is what happened with FOMC. So when price was coming back into this, I, I did want to see a trade in here. But at the same time, I didn't just want to take a sell limit inside of here. I didn't want to take no sell limit. Yeah, it could work out, but I didn't want to take it. I wanted to wait until like a refinement had came inside of this area because I know that my best sell area is right here. Is right here. And the reason why I know that this is my best um best case of a sell is because since we're still in this higher time frame daily order block right even though we ran down right here you see how we ran down and we took out this low and now we're pushing back up this could be like a manipulation right here and this would be our target for right now to take out and break um break structure right here hold on let me all right let me remove this it's in a way right here so i think this is like the near draw on liquidity so i really didn't want to like just take a trade right here because it's a potential 
uh, that it could just run this and this can be induced to sell right here okay so that's what i'm gonna be looking for uh potentially um it might not happen tomorrow um but if i am gonna take a sell limit off of here it's still gonna be half risk because this is like a b setup for me um uh, if it, if there's a refinement inside of here then i'll take i'll take the refinement to go back down and uh push back down but at the same time like when you think of the higher time frame and what the higher time frame is doing we're coming off this daily and we're pushing out who is that Okay, you good, you good, bro. I was about to say, just mute yourself if you you got stuff going on in the background. But yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna look into this area to potentially sell. If price does catch some reaction around here, uh, I don't know if I really want to, you know, still sell from here because I I want to see this get ran out and come into here. Uh, oh no, you good, you good. Oh, what's up, cuz? <laughs> that was my cousin. All right, but yeah. Um, that's what I'm gonna be looking for with EU. Y'all got any questions with this? Do y'all see do y'all see anything different? Okay, we good. All right, bet. All right, let's do GU. GU, uh kind of in the same context. Um, I still think potentially these lows are still gonna get ran out. We're just coming back into a premium of this range from the top of here. To the bottom so um, with premium and discount right the blue is premium the uh, bottom is discount i only want to sell in premium in a premium price range so i am looking at this area potentially to see what price does in here i'm not just going to enter off of um, what price does um just just randomly you know what i'm saying i'm gonna wait until i get my clean um price action fractal pattern that i look for uh, Quasimodo is what they call it. Some stop pun, break of structure, RTO, or uh, back to FVG. That's what I'm gonna look for inside of this area in here. If I don't get that, I know that this would be a best, my best sell right in here. I could just put a sell limit in here if price does get all the way back up to here to sell back down potentially. Um, but yeah, that's in short, that's all GU I got for GU right now. I wanted to see a buy here, uh, down here at this uh, bullish order block. But with my context, right, with my context, if you guys looked at my um, weekly uh, outlook, um, I was looking for these lows to be ran out potentially. But I, I know that it's always going to be some type of reaction um, potentially at these type of areas. So you could catch a, a few pips from these areas to sell, go up, and then you could sell it back down. But um, if I was going to take a buy here, it had to be clean. You know what I mean? It has to be clean because I know that this is low probable that it's going to come off of this area. And in my context, it's to uh, take out these lows, right? So, yeah, this is what I'm looking for here. And um, if, if I don't get my reaction here that I'm looking for, uh, I'm going to just wait for this area. And as you can see, it does line up with some type of breaker. And this order block right in here. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm looking to sell EU more than I am with a GU. Um, yeah. So let's do. Oh, my fault. Y'all got any questions with GU? Any questions with GU? Yo, Angelo. Yo, what's good? Is that uh, Chan? Yeah, sure. Yo, oh, what's up, Chan? But yeah. Been long, be long since I talked to you. <laughs> right um let's do us 30 yo i'm so mad bro oh my god bro i swear to god this is like the second time us 30 has came to my entry when i'm not active in the market right when i'm not active in the market so if you guys look at my pre-week analysis right i was looking for buys under this low into this bullish order block right here and let me see. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I was looking for buys inside of here. And you could see like the reaction. This is what I was talking about with EU, right? You know how EU was too choppy and didn't leave no FEG, nothing. This actually gave a nice reaction, right? 
it was more aggressive. It's not too many, it's not too choppy, none of that, right? So I knew that it was going to be potential buys inside of this area. And I was going to look for a buy when I woke up um, around London session, but it came around um, Asian, came around Asian, Asian session. Same thing with uh, S&P. And um, this is where I see uh, US 30 potentially going. First, this draw right here, these highs here, um, and then potentially these highs here, because I think this is just a pullback, a retracement, and this is the end of the retracement to push up to back back up to these highs. That's what I'm thinking with um, US 30 right now. Um, so let me see if I can find a area that I would like to trade off of. I think it was a I think it was an area on S and P instead that looked better. Yeah, this looks way better. So um, going off the higher time frame, right? The four hour, you have this down candle right here. So this is what I'm framing my trade off of. So you have the open here. Right, you have the open. This would be like your classic break and retest. So say if you guys like trading break and retest, say you don't trade smart money. People who follow me, they probably do trade smart money, but say you don't. Whenever you're taking breaks and retests, this is what you want to see. You want to see clean, clean down moves, right? Before before you get a break higher, you will. It's it's best to see a stop hunt like this, right here. So it's like your normal breaker type type shit, right? So you want to see liquidity get taken out before you, it breaks structure. But every time it breaks structure, you want to see a clear buy side inefficiency, sell side imbalance, right? This is called a bissy. The opposite is a sibby, right? So you want to see clean, like a clean um, break, clean move. And you have all this imbalance to fill. So when price comes back down, right, creates liquidity or whatever, and it comes back into this, right, you could take your buy right here and then your stops under. If you take breaks and retests, if you have a, a, a confirmation that you will like, um, you could take it, you could take it um, right here. You can wait for your wick rejections. I know that um, when I first got into trading, I was under Momo FX. And this is how he, he trades breaks and retests and divergence. Um, and when I first started trading, that's how I traded. But um, at the same time, I never looked for this type of shit. And then once I started getting into smart money, I start seeing this all the time. And I'm like, yo, when I was trading breaking retests, this is the, the most high probable breaks and retests right here. So if that's what you're going to trade, if you're doing it with a trend, you can have, create a whole plan off of that and just trade off of that. But let's get let's get out of that because y'all probably don't even trade uh, <laughs> retail. But say people on my YouTube, if you're coming to my YouTube right now, this is a um, this is something you could look into and back test. So uh, let me see. But yeah, so I'm going to look for a price to come into here and then potentially look for uh, any type of uh, reaction. Um, I it would be better for me to wait until it comes down to this down candle right here and possibly wick into this. This breaker right here. So this is a breaker, this up candle before this down move that took out this right here. If you want to, you don't have to mark out the breaker. You can just mark out this whole range. But I'm looking inside of, sorry for the three, uh, five-year-old drawings, but I'm going to be looking for um, price to come into this range right here. And then I could I could potentially take a, just a buy limit right here, but I'm going to uh, wait for a little bit of reaction and then take the buy limit off of there. And then my targets would be not buy limit, my uh, market execution. And then my uh, targets would, excuse me, my targets would be here. And then um, the highs, right? Because the same thing with S&P. Every time price ran out a low, it went higher, right? Ran out a low, goes higher. Runs out a low. This should make a higher high. And if, if, if it doesn't, it doesn't have to because I'm going to be taking profits here and here and here. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Y'all got any questions with that? Yo, I'm so mad I missed this um, this trade. This came early. But this always happens to me, so I'm not completely mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to miss setups, but this would have been a very Good nice. Good question. Yeah. Yeah, so you say on a full hour, you say you draw that line. Um was that for you said that was the open on a four hour on the S and P? Oh, the S and P, yeah. yeah. This, this, the open of this uh, order block right here. Okay, okay. okay. I have that marked. You said that's the area. that's that's the possible area of it's coming back. A possible. Area. That, just, yeah, that's what I would like to see it come back to because you have this this uh, imbalance right here, this FEG for it to come back and fill 
right here. But I'm gonna I refine my area a little bit to these this down these two down candles right here to come into here. But it doesn't have to. If it does come into here and um and taps into this FEG and gives a reaction, then I'll just adapt. But I mainly want to see it come into here. But it doesn't have to like breaks and retests, right? It could just come into here and then uh, do what it does. You know what I mean? But I'm looking at this area specifically. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, thanks, man. No problem, bro. All right, let's do uh, gold, and then we could do some uh, more pairs. I don't know how much time I have on this, but we could do uh, more pairs that you guys want to uh, look into. Oh, uh, with gold, with gold, uh, my context right now is for us to take out these lows. That's been since uh, this week. I was looking for it to come into here, and it come into this bullish order block. Mm -hmm. Look at my weekly outlook; you can see that. But um, yeah, gold had came into this breaker right here. Plus this um this uh, hidden order block. I was looking for a trade here, but I didn't get it. I think I was too focused on EU. Um, and it, you know you can see how aggressively it sold off. And I'm looking for it to come back down. You had a little reaction right here. I didn't really want to take buys too much in here. I was looking for a potential sell um, somewhere somewhere. Uh, I think it yeah it tapped into here this area right here. But I was looking for a. I think it was like this range that I was looking at or this imbalance, I don't know, or this breaker. I forgot what I was looking at, but it came into this breaker. I don't think, I, I think this is hindsight right now. I don't think I've seen that. It came into this breaker. You can see it manipulated, took out these highs right here and then uh, came lower. Uh, retail, retail outlook, you're breaking retest, right? Uh, yeah. But the same thing, like I was saying, whenever you have a break in retest, you want to see price take out highs, and then come and aggressively break. Now, this didn't aggressively break like that. Actually, it did. I'm capping. It did aggressively break, but that's what you want to see. You see how that phenomenon just happened again on a retail uh, basis? You know what I mean? Uh, smart money basis, and you can see it with a, a retail outlook too. But yeah, it came into here, manipulated. I was looking. I wanted to see a sell inside of here. You can see how it tapped into the open of this um, up candle right here. And then it dipped down. I was looking for a higher price, maybe to come into here and come into this rejection block. So like your classic head and shoulders, classic head and shoulders. So boom, stop punt, come down. This is the right shoulder and then dip down. That's what I was looking at um, to trade off of, but it didn't happen right now. I'm looking at this order block right here, this up candle. I don't think it's going to come all the way up there. But if it does, then I'll potentially look for sales inside of there. But what I would like to see is a build up. I want to see a slow run back up, build up of liquidity. Maybe it could drop back down and then come back up. And then I'll take my sales there to come back down. And then it, uh, take out these two relative equal lows right here to come back into this uh, bullish higher time frame, bullish order block. And then maybe it could buy back up. But I think um, these lows are pretty sus to be ran to come down into this higher time frame weekly bullish order block right here. So you see all this liquidity being built up here. I think price is drawn to this to run down. So yeah, you might get a little reaction, a little buys inside of here, but you don't want to hold too long because I think these lows, this is just my outlook. I think these lows are going to be ran and then come into here. And then we can start getting our buys because you see all this build up right here, all this build up. So that's why I see what go, but that's it y'all. Y'all got any questions? I hope I explained everything uh, well for you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. All right, cool, cool. Y'all got any other pairs that you guys want to go over real quick? Or any questions? What pairs? Go up. Don't you trade, trade. What's, what's up, bro? I said, what pairs don't you trade? What pairs don't I trade? I don't trade. Yeah. I mean... When I when I used to swing trade, I traded almost all major pairs. But um, right now, I've just been focusing on EU, GU, and um, the indexes, and also gold. That's what I've been focusing on the most. Sometimes I'll look at AU, GJ, USD CAD. That's just on my market my market list. It's not specifically a pair that I wouldn't trade because liquidity and structure all works the same. You know what I mean? So 
Uh, but yeah, these are what I'm focused on the most because if I focus on every pair, then it, I'll see a whole bunch of setups and then I'll try to trade every single, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> setup that I want to trade. So um, I just try to stick to this and try to focus just on, you know, a few set of pairs like, like here. You know what I mean? So is it true uh, that, uh, was mm -hmm. it? XDX and USA like move the same. Yeah, they like kinda, XDX and yeah, they they move the same. But the reason why I have these two, the reason why I have these two marked up is because S and P. Like I look at both because sometimes S and P is much cleaner. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah, sometimes S and P will be cleaner, or US thirty will be a little cleaner. It's like with GU and EU. Sometimes they correlate, so I just check on which is cleaner and what aligns more, what looks better with my setup, and I'll trade that for the day, even though they they move um, the same. As you can see, they correlate it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. Yes, sir. All right. Is that it? What's up? Yeah, What's up, uh, Kenny? Oh, no, I, I think you was already in here. My fault, bro. <laughs> you good. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to see who else yeah. is in here. All right. Y'all got any more? Hold on. Somebody raised their hand. Did you already, um, did you already ask um, a question? Is good to be good? Or you had a suggestion on, on a pair? Okay. All right. Well, I think we good here. Yo. Oh, oh, what's up, bro? Yeah. Please, can you check New Zealand JPY for me? NZD. Yes, sir. Okay, so whenever you're looking at your pair, you want to know where price came from and what price is drawn to. So we can see that price came from here, right? This is, it had bearish order flow here on the daily. And then price had a movement, a bullish run after it came and took out these lows and probably came into like an area um, inside of here. And now we have a push up and then it broke structure here. Now the question is, right, you have, you have your premium and the discount it came into discount right and now it's moving back up so let's go ahead and scale down so price hindsight wise right i wouldn't have seen this until price did it but you know you want to collect data so price came into this this area right here this demand area of demand and then it pushed up and broke this structure here so we're constantly having bullish order flow Right now, I see I see it as being bullish, and you can see how clean these highs are right here. So this would be your draw, your near draw on liquidity right now. Um, now, what I what I want to buy right here, and for my um, sake, what I want to buy where it's at. Um, no, not where it's at right now. Maybe if it comes down to a discount, maybe if it comes down to a discount, I'll look to uh, buy. Y'all look to buy. You might have some type of reaction once it comes into here to come back down and then maybe possibly buy back up. So it could come back into this breaker right here, right? You got a little bit of FEG. You have a breaker. You also have this down candle that's pushing down. So I'm lining up all these, um, you feel me? Uh, what's the word? Confluence, institutional confluence, right? And I'm, I'm, it's more so based off the higher time frame. I don't just go to the five minute, three minute, and then try to, you feel me, um, get my analysis off of there because I'm not that type of trader. I like to trade. Would a hedge fund, you, you want to ask yourself, would a hedge fund take this type of trade? You know what I mean? So I'm looking at the daily four hour to kind of frame what I'm, where I'm trying to trade, or I'll take stupid trades and, you know what I'm saying, and over trade. You know what I mean? So um, this is what I'm looking for. If price does come back into here, I would be looking for a price. Oh, sorry about that. 
I will look for price. You could, what you could do is you could look at here, right? You could look in here because you could draw this to here uh, and it still wouldn't be in discount. So, you know, but you could look at this area right here. Say you don't think price, because price doesn't always give a, once it, when it's trying to get to withdraw on liquidity, it doesn't always give a deep pullback. You know what I mean? So, um, you could you could because there's always a discount inside of a premium. So what you could do is is you could just you could draw your fib. My fault. You could draw your fib from here to here, and this would be a discount range right here. And also, this is a down candle before the up move. You also have when you look at the hourly, you scale out to a higher time frame. This is a down candle, right? Um, it was aggressive move up. You got FEG, all of that being left. And you, it, it could be a possible trade inside of here because it doesn't have to give a, a deep pullback. You know what I mean? So to get to, to, to the draw on liquidity. So you could pay attention to this area. Uh, I would also pay attention to this the most, though. So if it's not, if it's too choppy once it gets into this area right here, if it's not giving any clean price action, I will wait until it comes into here to this breaker plus this uh, down candle right here to move up to this, um, this um, or <laughs> what's that, drawing liquidity, these relative equal so, uh, so yeah, 15 minute, yep. That's what I see, bro. Yeah, thank you so much. That's what I see too. I just want to confirm the yeah. continuation pattern. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that point, I like yeah. that, yeah. If it fails, thank you so much to take out this high, bro. If it fails to take out this high, expect price to move back down to here as you're drawing liquidity and then come back into this order block here. Okay. So here. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh. Nice. All right. Any more pairs you guys want to go over? I know we, we got like eight minutes left. We can go over like uh one more pair quickly if you guys want to go over uh you can all right you can oh I already got it on here okay so you can you can already tell the draw is this right now like the short term short term draw is that oh short term draw is that what it did was it came back up and it mitigated something in here and and you got an aggressive drop right now. Now, looking at UCAD, bro, like, the reason why I haven't been looking at it that much is because, like, I'm not used to the movement uh, as much as I want to be. But you can see how I mitigated this hindsight-wise. And this is your draw to be taken out. Now, it could be some type of bias inside of here. But for me, bro, I would, I would want to see this low get ran out. Because you know how you have your classic head and shoulders, right? Even though this is like a bullish, right? You have this, you have this right here. Like this is still bullish, right? But when you have like a classic head and shoulders, right? Okay, you could say like the Quasimodo, boom, clean order flow, right? You have a high, you have a low, you have a higher high, and then you have a low and you have a, a failure to create a higher high, right? So what would be the next draw? The neckline, right? Clean order flow. That's what you want to see. And then continuation. That's what you would want to see. So like looking at this, I would like to see price come and take out these lows. Now it doesn't have to, if price gives you some good reactions inside of here, this is off the day, higher time frame. So if like price gives you good reactions inside of here, then yeah, I'll, I'll look for buys. But like, I would expect that, you just got to expect, you know what I'm saying? Adapt, but expect these lows to get taken out. But definitely expect this to be taken out because this is definitely the draw. If this don't get taken out, I want to take no buys inside of here at all. Even though it could give you a buy, right? But you want to take high probability, um, you know, setups. So just if it does give you a buy, just wait, wait for the sell to come back to go back down. So you like look at this. Let me see. It's not as clean, bro. Like this ain't clean. I mean, you you could say this is a breaker, right here. I mean, yeah, you do have this up candle right here. These two consecutive up candles. So I'll just mark out the open of this this would be like a breaker mitigation block yeah 
uh, try to get the bodies and just look into here and then maybe it might give you some type of um, whatever your model is, you know what I mean? It might give you something. Yeah, because this would this would be tapping into the FEG right here plus this mitigation block. So yeah, I'll look into here and then uh, take back sales, but I wouldn't try to take any buys in here. Personally, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? You might be comfortable with it and you might take like high, high, um, a lot of trades, you know what I mean? But for me, yeah, I'll wait for this or I'll wait for buys inside of here because this would be the inducement for your buys. Take out sell stops and then pair it with your buys to uh, go back up. But you got to be careful in this area as well, because this is like this would be like a B type set type of setup, because this is low resistance liquidity from this low price felt to make a higher high. So this would be your, your draw. This is your near draw. The low of this would be in this would be your uh, nearest draw plus this because it's relatively low. So I don't I, this is just long term perspective. You know what I mean? Once price starts printing and, and doing other shit, then you know what I'm saying? You just said that from there. But. This is what looks clear to me right now. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. All right. <laughs> I was making sure I'm like, uh, is my mic still on? Or <laughs> yeah, I thought my mic was on. That's why. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your um, – do you, does anybody have a quick question? We got like three minutes. We good. We good. All right. Thank you guys for uh, tapping in with me and uh, going over pairs and shit. Um, I appreciate that. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your, your week. So, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up bro? Uh, are you going to upload this video on your on your channel? Cause yeah, I'll put it I yeah, think I, I, on my channel. Yeah. Okay, I will appreciate that. Thank you very much. I forgot last time when we did a when we did a um a zoom call oh waiting for okay, the 20k cool. giveaway yeah that's on october 1st so just just stay tuned for that okay cool thank you sir um but yeah so <laughs> i'm about to go now i appreciate you guys